I will look after my sheep, says the Lord, and I will appoint a shepherd to pasture them, and I, the Lord, will be their God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with you. Brothers and sisters, on this memorial feast of St. Ovanzus Liguori, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are sent with a contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who constantly raise up in your church new examples of virtue, grant that we may follow so closely in the footsteps of the bishop St. Alphonsus in his zeal for souls, as to attain the same rewards that are his in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Prophet Jeremiah. The priests and prophets said to the princes and to all the people, This man deserves death. He has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Jeremiah gave this answer to the princes and all the people. It was the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and city all that you have heard. Now, therefore, reform your ways and your deeds. Listen to the voice of the Lord your God, so that the Lord will repent of the evil which he threatens you. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me what you think good and right. But mark well, if you put me to death, it is the innocent blood you bring on yourselves, on this city and its citizens. For in truth, it was the Lord who sent me to you to speak all these things for you to hear. Thereupon, the princes and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve death. It is in the name of the Lord our God that he speaks to us. So Ahakam, son of Shaphan, protected Jeremiah, so that he was not handed over to the people to put him to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorio Psalm. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Rescue me out of the mire, may I not sink. May I be rescued from my foes and from the watery depth. Let not the flood waters overwhelm me, nor the abyss swallow me up, nor the Lord, pit cross its mouth over me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O oh God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Lord, Lord in your, your great, great love, love answer, answer me. me. See you, holy ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor and his own who are bonds, his pans not. 
Lord, in your great love, answer me. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people for they regarded him as a prophet. But at birth, at, but at a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guests and delighted Herod so much that he saw to give her whatever she, may, she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oath and the guests who were present, he ordered that he be given, and he had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl, who took it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him and they went and told Jesus the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Last Monday, this last Monday of this week, I had a conversation with one of our staff members here at, at Transfiguration, Mary Denko who are sharing some conversation about the ongoing war. She asked me, why does evil keep on going on, on, and on? Why would somebody get a sword and kill somebody? Why is violence and injustice everywhere in the world? Then as we were sharing, I shared with her my experience of one of the archbishops back home in Uganda whom I know. In his diocese, there was a war for 22 years. And this archbishop, sometimes he would go out in the bush to make some peace talks with these rebels who are killing people. But the question was, if they were seeing the bishop and they were talking to him, and even they would not recollect their mind that what they were doing was evil, how about suppose that even they never had a chance to meet this bishop? Because the bishop, Archbishop Odama, would go in the bush and meet this guy. His name was called Kony. He would talk to him. Then Kony would tell him, you know, my Lord Bishop, I know it is bad to kill, but there is no way I can stop it because I want to join power. But the Archbishop Odama kept on praying and praying, not until 
they agreed and there was some peace in his diocese. Today, we celebrate the feast of St. Alphonsus Ligori. He says that the only way we can be holy, the only way our souls can be perfect, it is only in loving Christ. The love of Christ, the love me and you, we have for Christ. It removes any kind of violence, any kind of injustice, any kind of murder and killing we have in our heart. St. Alphonsus says that when we love God, then we grow in virtues. And it is only this love of God that perfects man. And he tells us that man was loved by God from all eternity. There is no time that God did not love us. So since God loved us, in turn, we are to love him, to know him, to come to him. And it is only when we come to him, when we love God, that we are reconciled deep down in our hearts and in our minds. He says, even to love God more and even better, God gave us the gifts. He gave us the intellect, memory, and senses. And more so, God gave us the conscience. The conscience, this inner voice in us, calling us to love and to do good and avoid evil. As the church teaches us, this conscience which God gave us as a gift to love him, the church teaches us that it is the aboriginal vicar of Christ. So, my brothers and sisters, if we are ever to make any decision to do something good, to respect the life of humanity, to do justice, it requires that we have the right conscience. This inner voice in us, which keeps us calling us to do the good. But as we have heard from the gospel, held, his conscience was corrupted because he was not after God. He never had love for Christ. And that's why he couldn't make a good decision for himself because he was troubled. His conscience was troubled. That's why he couldn't go into himself and see it was bad to kill John the Baptist. He went ahead and fooled what other people told him, the wife of Philip, Herodias. She said, I want John beheaded. And Herod went ahead, killed John, because he was influenced by this wife. So my brothers and sisters, when it comes to do good things and avoiding evil, it is when we enter into our innermost self through our conscience, which God has given us as a warning bell in our hearts to tell us what to do, and especially to, to come up with the right decision. So in order, my brothers and sisters, 
to have a clear conscience. We should every day, every night, before we go to bed, to examine our conscience. This will help us to make good decisions. It will help us to organize our families, not even our families, but even our lives. But once we have screwed our conscience, how will we love God? Because conscience is the vehicle of Christ. So conscience brings us closer to God. So let us continue praying through the intercession of St. Alphonsus Rigoli, who loved God and who acknowledges that God has given us this gift of intellect, memory, senses, and conscience to be conformed to God and to continue forming our consciences in order to do good. The Lord be with you. Let us offer our prayers. We pray for our needs and the needs of our world. For Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those watching by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Dennis Weeman, for whom this Mass is offered, May he experience eternal rest in Christ's mercy and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Knowing that the Lord hears us and desiring that our prayers are pleasing to him, we ask for Mary's maternal intercession. And so we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these prayers with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifices at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to enkindle our hearts with the celestial fire of your spirit, just as you granted that St. Alphonsus should celebrate these mysteries and by them offer himself to you as a holy sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Alphonsus you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. The world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say a word, my and my soul shall, shall be healed. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord finds awake when he comes and knocks at the gate. O God, who gave us St. Alphonsus to be a faithful steward and preacher of this great mystery, grant that your faithful may receive it often, and receiving it, praise you without end, through Christ our Lord. Thank you, Deacon Zeph, for your words on following and paying attention to our conscience. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go oh, forth, the mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs> 